hello friends welcome to engineering tutorial in today's video we are going to discuss about some basic concepts related to the origination of bioelectric signals so we have already discussed about the various types of biomedical signals that are present in the human body in today's video we are going to discuss about one such signal which is the bioelectric signals how do they originate so the origin of bioelectric signals is associated with the smallest functional and structural unit of the human body which is the cell we all know it is the basic building block uh, the cells they combine to form tissues tissues they combine to form organs and our human body is just a combination of various organs uh, which perform various tasks in a systematic way so the human body is composed of many cells almost trillions in numbers and they they vary in size from uh, 1 micrometer to 100 micrometer in diameter uh, 0.1 micron in thickness and 1 millimeter to 1 meter in length okay so so much uh, difference in the thickness in the diameter and in the length of the various cells that are associated with the various body parts so how does cell contribute to the development of the bioelectric signals so we know that the human body it is 70 percent liquid 70 percent fluid and that fluid the body fluids they contain several ions okay mainly the principal ions that are present in the body fluids are sodium okay the sodium ions which is a cation the potassium which is also a cation positively charged and chloride it is an anion okay it is negatively charged ion now we know that when oppositely charged particles are separated by certain distance an electric potential exists between those oppositely charged ions so here also these ions positively charged ions and negatively charged ions the unequal distribution of these ions across the cell membrane leads to the development of the electric potential which is called as bioelectric potential now the cell it behaves as a conductor an ionic conductor okay which uh, allows migration of certain ions and prevents certain ions from passing so it behaves as a semi permeable membrane okay a selective ionic filter it allows some ions to pass and blocks the passage of certain ions which leads to an unequal distribution of cations and anions across the cell membrane now this leads to the development of the action potential which is called as the electric potential now the electric potential across the cell can be visualized like this okay one side there are positive charge which is sodium and potassium and on the other side is negatively charged which is predominantly chloride now we know when positive and negative charged are separated the unequal distribution it leads to the development of an electric potential this is the same which happens in the human cell so there are two conditions in which the behavior of a human cell is analyzed first in the resting state or the unexcited state and another one is in the excited state two states so first let us discuss the behavior of the cell in the resting state now in the resting state the cell has negative charge along the inner surface of the cell membrane and positive charge along the outer surface okay this is the behavior of the cell during the resting state as you can see there is negative charge along the 
inner surface in the inside of the cell membrane and positive charge along the outer side. So, this unequal distribution of positive and negatively charged ions leads to the development of an electric potential which is called as resting potential. Okay? In this condition, the potential which is developed between these ions, oppositely charged ions is called as resting potential and the value of it is generally minus 90 millivolt. Okay? Minus 90 millivolt. So, the magnitude is very less millivolt, the order of millivolts. So, in this condition, the cell is said to be in polarized state. Okay? This unequal distribution of charge carriers along the cell membrane causes the development of the resting potential which is about minus 90 millivolt. Now, cell in the excited state. Now, when we call a cell to be in excited state, for example, when we walk, when we run, when we uh, wave our hand, when we lift any body part, okay, any simple activity that we do which, uh, which is associated with any part of the body, the cells associated with that body part get excited. For example, when we walk the cells associated with our legs they get excited when we uh, lift something the cells associated with our hands they get excited when we talk when we move our uh, jaws the upper and lower jaws the cells associated with our face they get excited they get stimulated so when the cells associated with a particular body part get excited or stimulated because of any physical activity the outer side of the cell becomes momentarily negative and the inner side the cell membrane it becomes positive just the opposite of that in the resting state okay the inner side becomes positive it acquires a positive charge and the outer side acquires a negative charge this is in the excited state just the opposite of what in resting state. In resting state, there is negative charge along the inner side of the cell membrane, positive charge along the outer side. In excited state, it is the opposite. There is positive charge in the, along the inner side and negative charge along the outer side. Okay? So, in the excited state, okay, in the excited state, because of this migration, okay, the the opposite which is happening to that in the resting state, the electric potential which is generated is called as action potential. Okay? This is the, the basic cause of the various electric potential which is generated by the various body parts, the action potential because of physical activity. Now, this action potential value is generally plus 20 millivolt. The resting potential value is minus 90 millivolt. The action potential value is plus 20 millivolt. The resting potential is generally is the electric potential generated by the cells during the unexcited state, the resting state under no physical activity. But when it is excited, it is stimulated, it acquires the value of plus 20 millivolt. And this process is called as depolarization. In resting state, the process is called the cell to be in polarized state and in excited state, it is called as depolarized state, okay? depolarization. So, this is the behavior of the cells in the resting state, negative charge along the inner surface, positive charge along the outer surface of the cell membrane and this is the behavior of the cells in the excited state positive charge along the inner surface and negative charge along the outer surface. So, just the opposite of each other. Now, now after being excited or stimulated, the cell again returns back to its normal resting state. It does not stay in the excited state indefinitely. Okay? It does not stay excited for a long period of time. It almost quickly returns back to its normal resting state that is from this state okay 
from excited state again back to resting state and acquires the resting potential of minus 90 millivolt. Now, this process of the cell returning from resting state to excited state, uh, sorry, uh, excited state to resting state is called as repolarization. Okay? The process of the cell after being excited or stimulated again returning back to the resting state is called as repolarization. Again, it acquires the resting potential which is about minus 90 millivolt and the time which it takes for returning back to the resting state is called as refractory period which is generally about uh, 3 to 4 millisecond okay 3 to 4 millisecond the refractory period is generally it varies from 3 to 4 or 6 millisecond okay so this is a graph of uh, the electric potential changes during polar depolarization and repolarization of a cell so in the resting state this is the value of the electric potential which is minus 90 millivolt during the resting state. Whenever any physical activity takes place when it is externally stimulated or excited it acquires the action potential plus 20 millivolt. Okay? This is during excitation and soon after a few milliseconds generally 3 to 4 millisecond the electric potential again drops back to the resting potential minus 90 millivolt and it remains as it is unless further excited or stimulated. So, this is the uh, behavior of the electric potential associated with the cells. So, the bioelectric signals are uh, the main bioelectric signals that are present in the human body they are associated with heart, brain and the skeletal muscles. Okay? They are the main bioelectric signals. The electrical signal, the bioelectric signal associated with heart is called as electrocardiogram signal and uh, the measurement technique is called as electrocardiography. The bioelectric signal associated with brain is called as electroencephalography, EEG, this is called as ECG and those with skeletal muscles is called as electromyography, EMG. Now, this is the frequency range of ECG generally from 0 0.05 to 120 hertz and the amplitude range is from 0.1 to 5 micro volts. So, it varies in between that and uh, for EEG the frequency range is from 0 0.1 to 100 hertz and amplitude range is from 2 to 200 micro volt. It can be more than that but this is the normal range, it can be less or more than that. Then for EMG it is 5 to 2 kilohertz the normal range and then the amplitude range is 0.1 to 5 micro volt. So, these are the three main bioelectric signals that are used in the uh, biomedical analysis, uh, the patient monitoring system for the identification of any medical anomaly associated with heart, brain or the muscular parts. So, this is all about the bioelectric signals, the origin of bioelectric signals. So, we have discussed about how the bioelectric signals originate, what is the reason electric potential develops across uh, cells, it is because of uh, the unequal distribution of positively and negatively charged ions. We also discussed the behavior of the cell in resting state, exciting state, excited state and the cell again returning back to the resting state from excited state. So, I hope you like this video and please subscribe my channel engineering tutorial for more such videos related to electrical electronics instrumentation and communication engineering. Have a great day. Thank you very much.